right, so I'm here with my friend Lauren, and I, I mentioned that I've been printing up some some different Magic the Gathering tokens, and so I've been trying out some different POD printers, print-on-demand uh, card card printers, and I've actually I've tried a few of them already. Um, one I tried, I don't have any of the cards there from them, but I I didn't I didn't really like how those turned out, but I I really did like drive-through cards. Um, their customer service was really good. The card qualities um, is pretty good as well, and the turnaround time was excellent as well. And the printing looks the printing looks really great too. So, um, but we just got a package from um, MakePlayingCards.com, and one of the things I liked about them is they offered the option to do foil as well. So we're just gonna crack that open and see what it looks like. Yeah. <clears throat> See if I can get this. Oh, look at that! All right, That's awesome. And I ordered quite a few because I wanted them for Comic Con. Um, I wasn't actually sure if they were going to show up. So it looks like this is one of the standard decks. You want to crack that open, Laura? Uh, so I, <laughs> I, I ordered some standard cards and then i ordered some foil and even some plastic cards from them as well they're compared to drive through cards their prices were can i say that. considerably more but um uh, but we'll we'll see <laughs> um mm, i want to the cards mm -hmm. well, Card quality looks pretty good. The printing looks looks pretty good as well. It's a little, it's not as, I guess, bright as the. Uh, there's the drive-through cards and the makeplayingcards.com. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's go ahead and I'll crack one of these open while Lauren shows you some of the other cards dragon zombie open. look at the zombie that's fun these are the back I can't cards open it you can do it you got this use your zombie creature 2 2 to help you I'm gonna reach over <laughs> elemental Elemental creature. Ooh. All right, I got these open. So these are the foils. Oh, those are cool. Look at that. And those are pretty cool. Those are neat. I, I like how those turned out. Yeah. I like zombies. the zombie ones. Those will go in my zombie deck. You guys with your young pyromancers. Do you want to show the difference between the two, maybe? Sure. The blue one? Yeah. Let's see, Oops. there's the... There it is. Very cool. I'm really happy with how those look. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Oh, the slivers look great. Oh, look at that. All right. So, yeah, happy with really happy with how those look um and the last set this is a plastic deck which is another option that they had on there oh, my fingers are sort of open the last yeah. one i've got the knife here too if you need it <clears throat> but yeah so um like i said drive through cards they were fantastic their their um customer service was really great. The turnaround time was really fast and the piece price was definitely um, less expensive, very affordable, especially for just trying out their their service. So I'll definitely use them again. again. Um, and then these these guys uh, make playing cards. Um, they're, they, were, they were a bit more expensive, but they did have a few extra options that, that are kind of cool, more as like a novelty than anything else. You have any luck? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah that'll, <laughs> that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. 
I got it. Fangs, mm. the fangs of steel. Well, and you can see in here, I, I actually ordered quite a, quite a few, I mean, oh, cool. so that I'd have plenty for uh, people that came by Emerald City Comic Con. Um, wanted to pick some up. Okay. Oh, okay. So these are the plastic ones. They're obviously going to be waterproof. I can like dunk them in water and stuff. Um, I don't have any water here. I put one in my mouth. Um, <laughs> so those are pretty neat, actually. And the color looks really good on them, too. Yeah. So that is very... Oh, look at that. That's really neat. That is very cool. The comparison there. Yeah, it looks great. Do, do, they... This one definitely feels different than this one. This, this one, plastic ones are more bendy. Yeah. Paper ones are definitely thicker or more dense. Less or, bendy. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. I don't have words. All right. Well, yeah. So it, it, the the it looks good. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm happy with how this turned out. So Very cool. We will we'll see you at Comic Con. Come to Comic Con. See this guy. So this is, you you get to be my first interview. We so I I'm, all right you know, all, all gonna... softball questions <laughs> though right all right yes so like, so, yeah so, so do you like softball? Uh, no, I, I I don't really follow softball. <laughs> uh, so you're Nate Taylor. You're that's me. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me a little bit about yourself, or tell these guys a little bit about. Tell the camera about myself. Right, turn. The, oh, wait. Into right. the microphone. <laughs> it's like. like <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So just just tell us about you and okay. uh, the, the, what kind of stuff you do. I'm Nate Taylor. I love to do primarily fi fantasy and comic book art and science fiction. Uh, I work a lot with uh, author Patrick Rothfuss, and so I've done a couple of books with him. Uh, the Not for Children Children's Book, The Adventures of the Princess and Mr. Wiffle, and also the novella The Slow Regard of Silent Things. But I also love to do just like parody mashups of Disney properties, and uh, or maybe I'll get sued for that. I don't know. Wait, yeah, is that no, on camera no, now? No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> is that on camera? <laughs> um, no, how, and, how would someone follow you if they wanted to see your stuff? Uh, Instagram primarily, at Nathan Taylor. Also on Twitter, at Major Sheep. Um, I'm on Facebook, but you can't really follow me there because it's just for my friends. Right. But, right. Um, and I'm trying Vero, but they're really falling behind. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm about. Able, I'm able to post like half of the time, so we'll we'll see how that yeah, goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what's going on here in your booth. Okay. Uh, well, I found out that I love to do a lot of jokes. So you know, uh, like D and D kind of stuff, coffee themed stuff, some of my own original characters, but I also like doing parodies. So, you know, you'll see some some Star Wars Disney mashups and just stuff that I think is creative. But I really just love exploring uh, sort of like the, the line between cartoon serious and cartoon funny and just seeing where I can go with that. If I can make a, a cartoon image emotional. That's great. So, Do you have a favorite thing here at, in your, on your, at your table? Well... Honestly, my coffee critter is probably my favorite and probably one of the best-selling ones because it's just, it exemplifies how I feel about coffee myself. And so it turns out that relates to a lot of people. But apart from that, this one here is, oh, that's my Monsters and Dames. But this one, people will buy this having never read the book because it just, they love the imagery of it. What, what book is it from? This is from The Slow Regard of Silent Things. And this is the title character. She sort of, she lives underground. She's very reclusive. But... It's, it's just a nice sort of melancholy, reflective piece, and it really draws people to it. Okay, that's great. And then, so, so what are your, I guess, your biggest influences or the things that inspire you to create art? Well, I totally grew up in the days of uh, newspaper funnies. So, you know, Calvin and Hobbes, Garfield, Family Circus, all that stuff. And so when I originally started, it was all about comic strips, making drawings quick and simple, and then I started getting into illustration, spending more time with it. I studied animation a little bit, enough to give me a sense of movement to put into my pictures. So my major influences would have been, you know, Disney movies, Bill Watterson from Calvin and Hobbes, yeah. Don Bluth, and then, you know, the big names like Frazetta and Todd Lockwood and stuff like that. Right. Well, and do you have any uh, advice for maybe people just starting out in art or interested or young artists? Um, well, you know, work on your art, of course. You know, spend as much time as you can on it, draw every day. But um, the thing that worked best for me is to make friends with people because you can become a great artist. You can, you can work on your own, but 
uh, it's very lonely yeah. if you just try to do it all by yourself. So you make friends and you get a support group and, a, and a, a people who believe the same way you do. And it's just, you know, you can find opportunities later in life that you didn't think you would be able to find. Right. Well, and that's how that's kind of how we met, too, is because exactly. we started just hanging out and drawing together. Yeah. And, you you had the the, um, the the invitation to come to your studio on Thursday nights. And yeah, I just took you up on that. And it's been great. You know, getting to know you, getting to know other artists. And it's really great because it's not competitive. We're all just there for each right. other. And I love it. Yeah, we're like, we're like co-workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're all in the same pursuit. We're not fighting for, <laughs> you know, ground right. space. Yeah, we're not chickens. Yeah, there's right. no, there's no <laughs> right. cock of the walk. Yeah. Right. right. That's my corn. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, thanks for taking the time, Nate. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for watching. I've added a link below to Justin Hillgrove's website so you can see his Magic the Gathering tokens as well as a link to Nate Taylor's Instagram so you can see more of his art. If you want to continue to join us on our journey, please subscribe to our channel, and if you wish to support us, be sure to like the video and leave a comment below. We hope to see you soon.